Good evening, Inspire Church. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's go. Put your hands together like this. Even though it's evening, it's a glorious day. Let's go. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures, all my failures, I tried to hide. It was my turn. It was my turn till I met you. Why? Cause you called, sir. You called my name.
lay aside all of the things that we have coming up in the next few days, all of the schedules, all of the expectations that sometimes weigh us down this time of year, and just reach out and grasp a hold of the faith of this season, of the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. And I think that I am speaking to people who know that you can look everywhere else and you can try anything else, but you will not find the satisfaction and the peace and the joy that we have in Jesus or the confidence to know that it is not over until He says it's over. The confidence to know that He will make a way when there seems to be no way. Sometimes you just have to look back over where you've come from and reach out to a faithful Father and say, I know you will never leave me. I know that this story is not over. I know that you are still writing the chapters and the pages of my life. And what you have called me into, you will be faithful to lead me into. Thank you, Jesus. Could we lift our hands one more time? We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Done with me, yeah. You're not done with me.
Hallelujah. Jesus, we need you. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Anybody need Jesus in the house? We need you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, lift your hands in the air. Father God, as we stand in a position of surrender, God, we stand crying out to you that we need you, Jesus. No more of us, God, but more of you, God. We need you, Jesus. We surrender our hearts and our minds we surrender our souls unto you on today, God. Lord, we surrender our thoughts unto you, God. We surrender our words unto you, God. Lord, we surrender our bodies unto you on today, God. Lord, use us in a mighty way, God. Begin to remove anything that's not like you out of our lives, God, so that we can have more of you, God, so that we can begin to operate in the presence of you, God, that the things that you've called us to do, that we'll begin to walk in it, God, that we'll begin to say what you said for us to say, God, that we'll begin to do the things that you've told us to do, God. Lord, that we'll begin to rebuke the enemy out of our lives, God, so that we can see the clear path of what you have in store for us, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, Jesus. Fill us and dwell us with your spirit, God. Lord, begin to change and rearrange us, God. Begin to transform us by the power of your mighty spirit, Jesus. Lord, we need you like never before, God. Lord, we need to be able to stand up in this crazy world that we live in, God, and begin to declare that you are the Lord of Lords, that you are the King of Kings, that you are our everything, God, that there is nothing impossible for you to do, God. Lord, somebody's in need of your healing on today, God. Begin to move in a mighty way in the crowd, God. Begin to move and heal their bodies, God. You said that by your stripes we are healed, and we declare healing on today, God. You said if we ask anything in your name, God, you, you are just and able to do it, God. So we ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you begin to heal and deliver by the power of your mighty hand. And we thank you, God. And we thank you, God. Come on, put your hands together and say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see your smiling faces on today. How's everybody doing tonight? 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we just want to welcome you in the house. We want to welcome all of our online guests as well as all of our first-time uh, members here. Is anybody visiting us for the first time? Just wave at me real quick. You visit us for the first time. I see you back there. I see you over there. Well, we are excited to have you in the building on today. We know that God has something special for you, so just wait and see. God's going to give you something special on tonight. So we are thankful for all the things that God has done. Has anybody been enjoying this season? This, you know, it's like cool weather outside, and we've just been having a good time in God at church. Amen. God is doing some great things for us here in the building. Well, we are, the ushers will be released to, to serve you. If you're, you need to offer an envelope, just raise your, raise your hand. We know that there's five ways to give, and any way that you choose to give, we know that it'd be an honor and blessing to give because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? And I'm, I'm always excited to give unto God because God has given so much unto me. He's blessed me with my house, my car, my job. And when I begin to think about all the things that God has blessed me with, when he just asks for a little bit of what I have to give back to honor him in, in his glory, I am so honored and privileged to be able to do that, man. So give unto God. We just have a few announcements. We want you to know that services are going to continue as normal. So on this Sunday, service will be normal at 9, at 11, and then 2 for the Spanish service. So make sure that you come out and, and be a part of those services. And then on the 25th, we're going to have a special one-hour service. It's always a great time. And what better way to enter into the Christmas Christmas Day, or in the Christmas Day, by having a service honoring him. Amen? So that's going to be at 5 o'clock, so you, we'll welcome you there. And then on next Sunday, December the 31st, we're going to have communion as well, so make sure that you're in attendance to be able to take communion. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you hold your offerings up unto God, we're going to pray over them. Father God, we just thank you. We honor you. And we count it as a privilege to give unto you, God. We know that you said that if we give, it shall be given unto us. Press down, shaken together. Run it over, shall they give into my bosom, God. And we thank you because we know that there are many things that you're going to do with these offerings, God, that you're going to bless many people as we give, God. And we thank you and we honor you with our gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. You ready to go higher tonight? Like, are you really ready? So in this moment, I don't, I don't want to, you know me, I'm, I don't want to make anything, anything that is not supposed. So right here, I think technically, is this the, can we say that this is the last Wednesday of the year? Sort of, we got one more. So this is the almost last Wednesday of the year. Almost, the, the first closing. So just looking back over the year and what God has done and just being grateful and just, I just really believe in the worship that you put in here now be the launching pad for where you start in 2024. So can we just do that tonight? Can we just do that tonight? Right here, just right here. Lift up your hands in the room. Surrender to the way. You're our firm foundation, God. Christ is my firm foundation. Sing with me. The rock. What else? When everything around me shaking. Do something different tonight. I've never been more. Why? That. Say, He's never let me down. He's faithful in narrations. Say, so why would he fail now? Scream it out, say! He won't. 
We believe it tonight I still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I
Lifted all over the room. That's it. Take your, take the moment. It's not just a moment. It's a habitation. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for deliverance. Lord God. May we never worship the same again. But may we always come to a place in you knowing that you're here and acting according to it. Father, may we never lose our wonder of who you are and what you do, not only in this room, but in our lives, everyday lives. Father, may you be the foundation of 2024. If we haven't built that foundation yet, may we build it now. Father, forgive us if we wasted time. But Father, I thank you that you will restore the time when we make the choice to say yes to you being the foundation, the cornerstone, the first fruit, the first step, the first yes. We thank you, God for it tonight, and we just give you glory, honor, and praise. Have your way in this room. Speak to our hearts tonight. We give you glory. Do you feel that that's in this room right here? Yeah, breathe, 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 breathe. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody who agreed say amen, and it is so. God bless you. It is so. Amen. Would you just remain standing with me for just a moment? Could you lift your hands with me one more time? Have you know that we are in the Advent season. And one of the prayers that the church prays during this season is Maranatha, which literally means several things. Like it means not only the Lord has come, it means literally the Lord comes and the Lord is coming. So how many know in this season, we're not only celebrating that, that he came. How many are you thankful that he came? But our, our prayer is, Maranatha, Lord, come. Would you just lift up your hands with me? Lord, come. I, I believe this. Before the Lord comes for his church, he's going to come to his church again. So in, in, in this spirit of Advent, would you just open up your heart and say, Lord, you are welcome. You are welcome here. We say, come, Lord Jesus. In this season, in our homes, in our lives, we are looking and anticipating a scripture that has been on my heart. You know, what a remarkable year we have had this year. I'm still looking forward to 2024, but the scripture that's been burning in my heart is Psalms 132. When David said, he said, I'm not gonna go to sleep until the Lord has a place to rest. Thank you, Father, that you have chosen Inspire to be a place where you can rest, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done in 2023, but Father, we thank you for what you're doing in 2024. We say, Maranatha, Lord, come. Come, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Just very quickly, would you greet your neighbor, give him a high five, and say, it's good to see you here tonight.
I want to do this very quickly. You're in for a treat tonight. Turn your neighbor and say, you're in for a treat. Christmas is coming early. We have with us our dear, dear friend, Apostle Natasha Gerbich, all the way from South Africa. And, and before she comes, I just want to say a couple, just a couple quick things that I want to get out of the way because I want her to have time. Um, her team is also with her, our dear friends, uh, Lisa Anton, and of course, Miss Liz. Um, they, to say that they have been friends of the house is an understatement. They're more like family. And we have been connected so many years, and uh, there is a real connection, and a, it, 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 it runs very deep. It's, it's, it's so genuine. And I was thinking about, uh, as we were worshiping, I was actually thinking of back to the time that I came when I was younger, uh, and Apostle Natasha was, was the person who uh, allowed me to preach my first message on the continent of Africa, and I was only 18 years old. That was, that was brave, okay? And so I have such special memories there and um, just incredible, incredible people. Uh, Ariel Gate, among the many things that they do, primarily uh, the Lord has given them an anointing to be a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. And so I believe Apostle Natasha has come with a word. So would you stand with me to your feet and give a warm welcome to our dear friend and our guest tonight, Apostle Natasha, all the way from South Africa. Are you praying for me? Um, I told um, Andrew he has to pray for me at this pulpit because I haven't actually ministered inside this church before. Would you stretch your hands with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift that Apostle Natasha is to us and to the body of Christ, Lord. We bless her right now. We thank you for sending her. And Father, we welcome um, what she, the word you have placed on her heart, but we welcome her ministry. We bless her ministry and we honor it. And so Father, where there's honor, Father, we, we believe the anointing will flow. So Father, let her feel at home and let her feel the honor because it truly is here. And God, we, we thank you for using her tonight to give us a word that is right on time for not only what you're doing, but what you are doing in the earth and in Inspired Church, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, we're already in sync. Please be seated. It's just incredible to be back. Um, I haven't been in America since 2020, and I wasn't planning to come at all this year. But the Lord had his plans, I had my plans, and you know how that works out, right? It works out the Lord wins every time. I don't know why we try and fight, but we do. It's an amazing thing. We keep doing that, and then the Lord, it's like an arm wrestle that you can never win. So um, just a suggestion, just, you know, say, yes, Lord, how high do I jump? How do you want it? Where do you want it? When do you want it? Because basically... The Lord is going to get what he wants. Okay, if you want to test him on that, be my guest. I'll see you later when you're exhausted, perspired, had enough, and given up, and then the Lord's still going to get what he asked you for in the first place. Amazing. So I just I really want to thank Dr. Hurd for trusting me uh, to come and speak a word here. He... Uh, we had so much stuff going on, getting the tickets to come here. Um, we had vouchers from Delta. Delta, of course, couldn't just let us book normally. We had to, like, negotiate because we had paid all that money and it was held and frozen and then had to unfreeze itself for me to get here and blah, blah. So it was a long story to get here, but it all makes it the sweeter because I am here. So, praise the Lord. And I'm here with my team, and um, we are just thrilled. And I know people in South Africa will be watching this also, so I greet everyone around the world. You know, during COVID, we, we started praying, and we didn't, we didn't finish because the government said we'll be shut down for 21 days, so we prayed every day for an hour, two, three hours every day. And then it went to... 
past the 21 days, then we went past 40 days, and then we went past 100 days, and then we went to 120 something days, and we thought, I think we should break now. But we were praying every single day, and we prayed very much for America, just so that you know. You're on our hearts, and we love you. So um, tonight, I really feel like, you know, when Dr. Hurd asks me to speak, he always says, it'll be good if you can speak on prayer. <laughs> like I'm the best prayer in the planet, and I really am not. But the reason he asks me to speak about prayer, because he must see something. And so I'm believing him, you know. You know what I mean? If he's seeing something, I believe he saw it. And I believe he saw right. So we'll just agree with Dr. Hurd tonight. Um, and what the Lord's been talking to me about um, is the eternal conversation. I believe that prayer is an eternal conversation. Miss Hurd, Jerry Hurd, thank you so much. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, we, we believe that, you know, when God started to speak to Adam in the garden, that was be a beginning of a relationship that God had never had with anyone. He actually created Adam for a relationship, right? And we have the whole Garden of Eden story, etc. And Adam enters into this eternal conversation because the Garden of Eden wasn't in time. It was outside of time somewhere. How are we doing? And somewhere along the line, this eternal conversation where God would speak to Adam every day, and it says that he heard the sound of his voice walking. So God is walking in the Garden of Eden and speaking. Somehow this walking thing is a speaking thing. Okay, just hold that and we'll get into it in a minute. Something to do with walking is something to do with speaking Hebrew in the Hebrew understanding here, and it's moving, okay? Yes? All right, I, don't look at me so funny because I'm going to think my accent's really bad and that you really don't get me, okay? And I'm going to try and say things again. So just smile at me like I know what I'm talking about. So Genesis 3 verse 8 is about this sound of the Lord walking through the garden. Let me just go there for a minute. Genesis 3 and 8. And it says, and they heard the voice. They heard the voice. So interesting to me, the surname is Dr. Richard heard. He heard something. Shama. And this word shama doesn't just mean to hear something, it means to obey what you're hearing. So it's not like you're just listening to sounds, it's like I heard it, I'm doing it. So you're blessed with having Dr. Heard, who's heard something spiritually leading this work. The voice. Okay, this is a call or a sound. In Hebrew, it's K-O-L, kol. It's literally like a cry. There's a voice sound they're hearing. Okay, everybody. And as God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. And I'm not going into that because that's on my, um, my assignment. But God is, there's a cry from the heart of God, will you walk with me? Will you walk with me and will you talk with me? 
because I'm crying out first. You see, he chose you first. He loved you first. He came after you first. He chased you down first. He was looking for you first because he made you for this fellowship. So, you know, everybody, you know, can go to prayer conferences. I've written a whole book on prayer. And I've got lots of CDs on prayer. But I just want to say something very succinct tonight that prayer is literally the response to the eternal conversation that God was looking for with Adam in the garden. God actually invited man to talk to him. And prayer is the way we respond. And we say, yes, I want to talk back to you. This eternal conversation and the sound that God was releasing in the garden was so important that we have someone called Satan who came to stop the conversation. Any way he could, he was going to stop this conversation for a reason. Because when you're outside of time and you're in eternity, something is happening when you're having a conversation with a God who is creating a universe that never stops growing. Maybe you are actually influencing a little bit, just touching a little bit of what the master potter is creating because he's bringing you into the conversation of what he's doing. Maybe there's some power that you have that you don't understand you have just because you pray. Because you're in an eternal conversation with an eternal God who is creating stars when he breathes out. And the universe keeps expanding because he said, let there be, and the Hebrew word is haya, light, or. And it's, it's just interesting that we're in a moment politically in time that is very, very, very unusual, but is prophesying to us. Israel is at war for 60, I don't know anymore. How many days now? Anybody knows? 70 plus days. And it started on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles, on a day we call the water pouring ceremony. And something was being poured out when the enemy came in. The next day is the eighth day of the feast. And when you step into the number eight of the Feast of Tabernacles, you were talking to the millennial rule of Messiah. Okay? So the tent that they stay in in Israel, if you go to Israel in this time, they will put um, these like shed-like tent, anything tentish, on their houses and you actually eat in that place for a week. And why were they doing that? Because they're prophesying to the millennium that one day the Messiah will come as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and he's going to rule all nations, all kingdoms, etc. Okay. But before that time, he's going to call all the Jewish people home. And there are never been more Jews that are considering going home from America than right now. If you don't understand that that is prophetic to the season, you've missed something. We also have so many Arab people literally seeing Jesus, having encounters with Jesus, even in Gaza, right now. We have atheistic Jews asking for their prayer paraphernalia, like these little strings you see, 
They're suddenly going to war and saying we want that as well as part of our uniform. They suddenly had to rush to make them because there weren't these so many religious Jews in the army. But suddenly they don't know if they're coming home. So suddenly there's a God in their life that's important. This is happening en masse, everybody. This is not like one person or two people. This is like a mass thing. And it's happening in front of nations because God is talking to nations. And he's talking via his people with whom he has a covenant, the covenant people, who, to whom he gave ten commandments. And because of those ten commandments right now, they are, being, they are suffering and going through all the stuff they're going through. And then I said, Lord, but aren't we also covenanted? But we have a new and a better covenant. So where's the persecution? It's there in the east. I was just in Turkey in March. And we were ministering to all the countries that end with stun. A lot of Muslim people, all the stunts. And these guys, you're sitting at a table with a guy who's been to jail for 15 years. Why? Because he loves Jesus. Something else. You're so humbled. I was talking to Dr. Hurd about it. He says, yeah, we see it in India. But I'm just saying to you, something is going on in the nations right now. Okay, and we have to say, where are we in this picture? Because what if God asks you, where were you in this time? What were you praying about? You want to tell me you're really praying to be blessed? And you didn't really ever pray for anybody else? I'm just putting it out there. And here the voice of God is crying out to Adam. And Jesus has to come and die so we can come back into this eternal conversation. Because you know that Lucifer used to walk in Ezekiel 28 and 14, up and down, also having a conversation, but he lost that place. So he couldn't stand watching Adam walking with a sound of a voice. Do you realize that Lucifer was only singing what he already heard, the voice singing to him when it walked with him? Hello, everybody. We are invited to this conversation. It's amazing. The first thing that Jesus says to his disciples is repent. This is how he starts preaching. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It means it's approaching. And then he says, come and follow me. Mean, Come walk with me. He doesn't say, come do ministry with me. He doesn't say, I've got a position for you at church. He, he, he didn't say that. He said, come. You see me walking and talking? Now come walk and talk because we're going to redo Eden here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And there is such a brooding of the Holy Spirit over this house. There's such a drawing into this eternal conversation with God. You don't understand. Angels watch you to go, how did you get the invitation to be in this incredible conversation? Who are you anyway? What is man? 
Who are you, you human being? Incredible, majestic, resplendent angels long to be in this position of conversation that you're in. But you're walking around in Walmart and you're walking around in the Galleria and uh, you've got stuff on your mind like it's Christmas and you've got to, you know, make it to the front of the queue. What's going on? Where's your conversation with God? He's looking for you. He's looking for the conversation because the Spirit of the Lord is coming and it's moving and it's flowing. So we just did a uh, conference on the um, restoration of the Tabernacle of David. We called it Raise the Tabernacle, Amos 9.11. And Amos 9.11 is all about God says, I will, on that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins. You know, when I first preached, it was at Christian Tabernacle, something about the tabernacle. Hello, everybody. A lot of stuff happened at the Tabernacle. Very interesting. And now you are in Spire, which is breathing. <sighs> All scripture is by inspiration. It's actually that word is. <sighs> Because this tabernacle breathes. <sighs> because someone lives in there <laughs> who's breathing an invitation to you. Because somebody wants to say something to you. And he wants you to begin, get into the conversation. So there's a scripture for you on this conversation story. Philippians 3.20 in the King James says, did we have that scripture? Can we put it up? Okay, Philippians 3. Okay, I don't know if you prepared that one. Um, Philippians 3.20 Say something about the conversation. Just going to go there. How are we doing, everyone? It's, it's a bit different, I know. <laughs> Philippians 3 and 20 says this. For our conversation is in heaven. Did you see that? Where's the conversation? Oh, we have a conversation in heaven, really? Yes, we do. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very interesting. You go to the, the New King James Version, and this, this thing doesn't say conversation. The same word conversation here is translated in the Greek into, you can translate it into citizenship. So, for you to be a citizen in heaven, you're conversing with it. So, don't tell me you saved and you never pray. It's not going to work. Because if you're a citizen, you're in conversation with heaven. Hello. You're in the eternal conversation. And citizenship here is not just about belonging to a city, because that's what it means. A citizenship 
is all about having the right to vote. Because this is where we get our word for politics. In Greek, a city is a polis, P-O-L-I-S. And when we are citizens, we are part of a polis, a gathering of people that make up a city. Hello. And in the understanding here, in the history, etc., it meant these people could vote what came in and out of their city because the kingdom of heaven is approaching. There is a city approaching. It's called the New Jerusalem. And if you're not in conversation with the New Jerusalem, then I don't know what atmosphere you are voting into and bringing into your city here on earth. Because it can only be on earth as it is in heaven, but we need people connected to heaven in a conversation right now with angels looking on, with the Lord inspiring. Because we're inside something called a tabernacle. Okay. Are you all here yet? So Jesus has restored us to the eternal conversation, this ancient conversation that wants us to walk and talk with God again. And you see, when Jesus says to them, take my yoke, remember, upon thee, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's good. Do you know what that whole thing was about? He was calling them to follow his teaching because every rabbi was yoked to, do, to his disciples. It was understood as a yoke. Are you here yet? And a yoke looked like what it looks like in ancient times for two cows or bulls or whatever to be yoked. So when you took on the yoke, what did you just do to your neck? You just bowed it to the will of God. And you just started to push things on the earth in conversation with what God is looking for. Because didn't you know, his kingdom is coming. Because you are a citizen of the New Jerusalem already, you also are in the conversation of what heaven is already speaking about. Can you imagine that? You just get born. you like an ordinary person. You do ordinary stuff. Generally, we sin a lot, and then one day we wake up and get saved maybe, hopefully. Please, Jesus. And then we found out, wow, we call to have conversations with the Holy One of Israel. Can you, can you fathom this? And you know, the craziest part is he likes this. He wants this. He's looking for this. He's crying out for this. You don't understand that when it says that David was a man after God's own heart. You see, this is where we are. This one thing you sang was his vow. One thing have I desired of the Lord. One thing. He picked up the cry of the father. It's going, Adam, where did you go? You left me. Second Adam comes on the cross and he dies and he's saying, please come back to this conversation. I 
I've, I've taught this so many times, but anyway. What makes God happy? What gives him pleasure? You know, we are happy when we got that deal before Christmas. And we made it and we got the last, whatever it was, great thing that was being offered by whatever store, right? Now we're happy. Okay? Happiness lasts however long. When we're going to have a conference, we'll pray and fast and, oh, God, touch me and change something and, and we'll pray and fast and then the conference comes and it's a day or two or three or however long. And then we got whatever we wanted, right? And then we just go home. We, we invited God to come in here tonight. Do you say goodbye when you leave here? Just leave him. Okay, God, I got what I needed. Thanks, I'm gone now. See you next week or whatever. This is a very tender thing. I'm, I'm serious. God is only happy when he's amongst his people. And he's got to train these people that come out of Egypt how to house him in a little tent in the midst of them in a desert. Because he's trying to tell them, I want to live with you. I want to bring my glory in the midst of you. But I need you to do certain things for that to happen. Because I can't just arrive where you've all just been pagan and you've just been doing these horrific things. And uh, I can't just come in my glory. And I can't just walk with you. I can't, I can't do that. So I've got to train this people take them in a desert, train them so I can come down fire by night, pillar of cloud by day. That's the description. But that's a person that's breathing in the tent right now. That's the person breathing in the eternal conversation. And inspire sounds like... <sighs> That's what you named this place. So you went from tabernacle to listening to him breathe. Do you know how intimate you have to be to be that close to someone to hear them breathe? So what did you actually say about yourselves? We're looking for an intimacy with God beyond what we had in the tabernacle. You see, at the end of the day, God is only happy when he's going to live with you and you're not going to leave him again. Because you're going to get busy. You're going to do what you do. You have to feed your family. You have to do what you do every day, and that's, you know, normal stuff. But he's looking for the day that you don't leave him so he doesn't have to leave you. He's looking for a peculiar kind of intimacy, and you're like, you know, really, you're the God of the universe, and you've got to come to a mud person like me that you made out of the mud and <sighs> spoke to, and now you want to have a chat? Really, God, what do I know about anything? No, I want you to talk to me. And I want you to walk with me. Are we going to say yes, people? And you see, God is only really happy in the book of Revelations where it says, and the tabernacle of God is now with men, and he has wiped away every tear. Now, we use that for funerals. It's not about funerals. It's about God doesn't have to leave. The revival doesn't have to be over. He wants to be with you in the continuous sense, but our physical bodies kind of burn out and our souls kind of get 
tired and irritable, and we can't, we don't know how to do that. But his whole thing of priesthood is to train us to be in his continuous presence. And, you know, we have taken on so many other things except God. You know, Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. But we have bound ourselves to everything else. In, in Numbers um, chapter 30, verses 3 and 4, it talks about in the case of a vow or an oath or a promise. When you make a vow or an oath or a promise, it says you bind, that's like with rope, your soul, that's your mind, your will, and your emotions, which means you've got ropes yourself up. Every time you compromised, every time you was, you was in that conversation with your buddies and they were talking all kinds of stuff, and you compromised, you bound yourself. Every time you promised, every time you agreed, you put a rope around you that is not an altar to God. So in the end, when you have to worship and you have to walk with God, you don't have anything to say because you're so bound. And you don't need a demon to do it. You did it all by your precious little self. And you have to repent and take off those bondages and say, you know those promises I made, I know those people I've been speaking to, this is not a good thing. Lord, I'm sorry. This is not why you put me on the planet. You didn't put me on this planet to be involved in all this nonsense. You put me on this planet to have an eternal conversation with an eternal God and usher in an eternal kingdom because I'm a citizen of an eternal city called New Jerusalem. And I have entered into that conversation. We call the conversation prayer. And some of the time, guys, you know what? I go into a place of watching the oldest kind of people pray. So I've been watching conservative Jews praying. And a lot of their prayers singing. And they sing scripture. Some of the time I'm watching Orthodox Greeks sing. Because some of this stuff is so ancient that there's something we missed Something we didn't hand down. I don't, know, I don't know how to say this, but you know what? I'm, I'm a digger person. I want to know the meaning of everything, and then when I found that everything, then I want to know where everything came from, and then I'm going to dig behind that, and that's how I go, okay? Because to me, why does God want to talk with me and walk with me? Well, he must know some a whole lot of stuff that I don't know. You know, I just want you to know, God is crying for you. And he was prepared to send his only son to continue the conversation he lost with you. I mean, you think you crying getting saved, he's crying getting you back. Who do you think's crying more? The father or the son that got together? Hey, mommy, your son has been lost to drugs when he comes home. Who's crying more? Who felt more pain? I think it's the mom and the dad, honestly. Because children are like, sometimes not with it. Are you with me? With all due respect. We need to understand when we, we call to this house of prayer, which is Isaiah 56, 7. And this house of prayer is an altar on top of a mountain. And it says, it's a house of prayer for the nations. And this word prayer is tefillah. And I can do a whole exegesis on this. But the long and the short of it, you've seen Jewish men wrap their arm, right? 
When they wrap their arm, you know what they're saying? I am binding myself to this word, to this altar, which is here, O Israel, and the Lord thy God is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. Remember Jesus quoting that? And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because he was asked which were the greatest of the Ten Commandments, and he quoted these, which were basically the rabbis saw as a summation of all ten. How are we doing? At the end of the day, if you go into Isaiah 66, God is saying... Where is the house you are going to build for me to come and rest in? God is saying, we, we're talking and we're walking, but at some point you have to build a house so that I can come rest in it permanently. Most of us don't want God permanently. We have to train to handle that kind of glory. But Dr. Hood has been listening to this one guy. Um, his name is Friedman, and he played him for you already. I will build a house for you. It comes from... 1 Chronicle 17, 2. You shall build me a house, and you will be my son, and I will be your father. And just somehow, there's an impartation in this thing that I don't know how else to explain. Do you want to just play that for us for a second if you're there? It's got Hebrew and English. So if what I'm saying to you makes any sense, and you want to be in this conversation with God to a place that you want God permanently in your life, I want you to just absorb this. If you want to stand on your feet and acknowledge this while it's singing, that's fine. If you want to open your hands, that's fine. Are we ready there? He shall build one chronicles. Talking to Solomon. It's David for Solomon. One Samuel. He will build a house. But my mercy shall not depart from him. This is the cry of God's heart. If you want to stand, stand. My mercy shall not depart. I will be to him a father. And he shall be my son. But my mercy my spirit, my compassion. I am father and he is son.
So, Father, we want to come to you right now. Thank you. And, Lord, we want to answer you today. Who will build a house for me? Who is going to answer the call, the cry of my heart tonight? This is not about you tonight. This is about the Father. Hasn't the Lord given you enough? Hasn't He blessed you? Don't you want to give Him something too? Father, we just want to come to you. It takes the Spirit of God to give back to God because we don't know how to do this. Do you know that? Holy Spirit, I'm asking for your help to respond to the call of your heart, like David. Do you realize, guys, that having the heart of David was not because he was a great warrior, because he was a king, because he was whatever. The heart of David understood the heart of God and was responding in an eternal conversation. And God so appreciated it. He took such pleasure that somebody cared how he felt. Have you ever thought about that? What gives God pleasure? What makes him happy? I demand, God bless me, God, I need this, I need that. My own sick, my this one, da 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 da. We're going to spend eternity with him. You won't need to ask for another thing. Everything's going to be there. So what are you going to have if you don't have a conversation now, not about stuff? Can you hear the heart of the Father beating? Can you not hear? <sighs> Inspired church, He's breathing on you again. Oh, yes. You know, before Jesus ministered, this is the song he would have sung. The Spirit of the Lord is now upon me. It's now resting on me. Can I do that? I want to finish with this. Isaiah 61. Remember that? He quotes that because it would have been the scripture of that week. So he literally stood at the pulpit and he read that week's scripture which would have been Isaiah 61. Because Isaiah 11, and please bear with me, I just want to play one more Jewish song, which is really Isaiah 11 verse 2, the spirit of the sovereign Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, is going to rest upon me, and is going to name the sevenfold spirit. We're finishing, guys. Here we go. The Lord, the Nacha is rest, Ruach is the spirit, Ruach, Let's go to the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Ruach, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge, 
and the fear of the Lord. So, Father, we thank you. That was the spirit that rested on Jesus, the sevenfold Holy Spirit. And tonight, Father, I'm praying a blessing on everyone here that the Holy Spirit will now begin to rest upon us. The Spirit that is, is breathing through this auditorium tonight, that you will build yourself in these people, your house, that it will be a permanent dwelling place for your presence. And that we will continue the eternal conversation that Satan tried to stop into the generations to come. Thank you so much. I'm privileged to have been able to speak to you today, tonight. Thank you. Could you just stand with me to your feet? <clears throat> Come on, let's just lift our hands. How many of you can feel the presence of God in the room? Amen. You can feel that as Apostle Natasha was bringing that word that there's an impartation. But how I want to close tonight, so um, they're going to put up the five ways to give. And so if you want to sow into Apostle Natasha's ministry, which is our custom here, that, that those are the ways you can do it right there. And uh, I would ask some of our ushers maybe just stand near their doors uh, as people are leaving in case you want to give in person or, or need an envelope. But I, I, with every eye closed, would you just lift your hands with me? I'm going to ask our, our uh, prayer, uh, prayer team and counselors to please come forward. Before we leave this place, just for those who feel led, this is how I feel led to close tonight. Because as she was speaking tonight, I think she was speaking to our DNA and what God not only has been doing here, but what God is doing here. Amen. And I believe that not only is there impartation tonight, but there's an invitation to respond. And I just, I just want to give you the opportunity. You don't have to. But if your heart wants to respond and you just want to come to these altars and prepare, you know, I don't know about you, but I felt led there just even to begin to prepare my heart for the next year. Say, Lord, I want to consecrate myself. I want to consecrate myself to a deeper walk, to a deeper conversation with you. If that's your heart cry and you just want to end here and you just want to take time to be with him, I'm going to invite you to come. For all the rest of us in this room that you have kids in the nursery and you got to go or you got all the uh, responsibilities to get to, let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you for your presence that we feel in this room tonight and for the word that you have spoken. We thank you for the invitation that we feel from your heart, Lord. The song, when David said, it, it, there's a scripture that says it entered the heart of David to build God a house. I always found that fascinating. It said it entered his heart. Because the truth is that that desires, Apostle Natasha said, it didn't originate in David. As David pursued the heart of God, the desires that were on the heart of God began to enter and become his desire. And that's why we have to respond because it's in the pursuit. It's in the, it's in the response. It's in the, uh, it's in the walking with and the going with and, and, and moving with him. It's as we pursue him that we hear the sound and we hear the invitation from his heart. So Father, tonight I pray that over every single one of us, Lord that we would hear your heart tonight calling us into that deeper place of intimacy, of, of prayer, of walking with you, Father. 
Help us to shake off. I don't know about you. This is my prayer. Help us to shake off all of the trappings that, that we get entangled with and all of the things that so, so many times preoccupy our mind and our conversations. Father, we thank you, God, for bringing us back into an eternal conversation where our hearts and our minds are set on eternal things, Lord. So, Father, we love you tonight. We bless your name. Come on, we're just going to, for those who want to linger, we're just going to linger here in the presence. Don't feel any rush. Linger as long as you want. For those who have to leave, God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you this Sunday. Amen. God bless you.